Hello and welcome. My name is Diane Janeway and I have the pleasure of being your moderator for this intelligence briefing. Today, Guy Eastman will present an in-depth look at the U.S. Department of Defense FY19 budget, which was released on 12 February. The 2018 Jane's Intelligence Briefing Program consists of approximately 40 events and is available to all customers who subscribe to Jane's Intelligence Center and Modules, which includes Markets Forecast. Our briefer, Guy Eastman, has been with Jane since 2011 and serves as a senior analyst for the Jane's Defense Budget Team. Guy's deep experience in the DOD budget process is a result of a 20-year career as a naval officer with tours of duty in the Pentagon as a POM coordinator and a branch head, as well as a post, as post-military experience as a strategic planner for the defense industry at Lockheed Morton Corporation. Now, over to you, Guy. Thank you very much, Diane, and uh, welcome to all our customers today as we take a uh, deeper uh, look into the uh, defense uh, budget. Uh, we had the uh, first look. Uh, back on the uh, 15th of uh, February, and now we're following it up with our in-depth look. So today, we'll, the purpose is basically to go through some of the events that uh, led up to the uh, to the uh, uh, delivery of the budget on the 12th of uh, February. As Diane mentioned, you can see some of those events uh, there, going all the way back to the Budget Control Act of 2011, and then of course uh, in, on the 5th of May last year, uh, the uh, fiscal year 17 uh, Appropriations Act was signed. Uh, and then, of course, in May, later in May, the 18 budget was uh, submitted. And then, of course, we're, we're now dealing with fiscal year 19. So, so basically, we're looking at a 686.6 billion dollar discretionary uh, portion of the budget today, and it's about 3.5 percent of the uh, 18 GDP. So, uh, we're trying to build up our, our depleted military over over time. So the the agenda and the approach today, as you see, is on the screen. We'll, we'll look at the top lines. We'll look at a lot of uh, budget displays, and some of that will be reviewed before we get into the meat of it. We'll have two modules on cyber operations and uh, S&T, simulation and training. And then we'll go into the, the various uh, service modules and discuss what's important and what's driving the various budgets uh, there. And then lastly, uh, we'll, we'll look at the, the unfunded priority list before we look at the trends and the, the summary. So basically, uh, the current situation, uh, I'll go through that now. Uh, and again, some of this is review, but we'll, we'll uh, hit uh, the highlights later. And so uh, we, we um, have a large GDP, $20.8 uh, uh, trillion dollar GDP with a large national debt to accompany it. Uh, debt ceiling kind of went away for a year, uh, obviously. Uh, the uh, requested outlays in uh, fiscal year 19 from the entire U.S. government, $4.4 trillion. Uh, as I said, the discretionary portion of the DOD budget is $686.1 billion. It's about 15.6 of the government budget. But when you add all the pensions and, and the various other elements, the, the Department of Energy portion, et cetera, you get up to about $716 billion for the entire 050 budget. Uh, the, the caps were raised. You probably heard that the, uh, the, uh, the, the Congress came up with uh, a two-year deal to raise the, the discretionary caps. So in 18, the cap is up to 629 billion. In 19, it's 614, uh, 647 billion, which obviously helps the U.S. military uh, get to its uh, needed requirements. So the NDA, the National Defense Authorization Act, was signed uh, on the 12th of December, but the 18 uh, Appropriations Act is still in Congress, has not been signed, and hopefully it will be by the end of this uh, current CR. Uh, we'll talk about that later. Uh, the discretionary budgets uh, all the way around the government are being squeezed by the mandatory uh, part of the budget and the interest on the debt. Budget Control Act is still a law, unfortunately, and uh, the DOD has lost buying power over time since the, the sequestration started back in uh, fiscal year 13. So for Congress, it's a warning order, 199 days to go before the start of the new fiscal year. And uh, thanks for all the help you gave us on the bipartisan agreement, but it was five months late. So we're going to take a look now at the uh, the baseline, okay? So you can see the yellow stripe there is for fiscal year 19. That's what we're talking about today primarily, although we actually are going to address the entire fit up the future year uh, defense program. So the base budget uh, is $617 billion, but when you add the overseas contingency operations portion or the uh, global war and terror portion uh, we're, uh, of $69 billion, actually that started at $89 billion, but they're transitioning uh, 20 billion back to the uh, to the base budget. 
um, you, you get your 686.1. When you add the rest of the uh, discretion, I mean the discretionary and the Department of uh, Energy um, portion, and you're up to 716 billion dollars. So there's about a 13 percent growth that's baked into this uh, particular plan. For those that have attended before, you've seen this chart. Uh, basically, this is a long-term uh, look all the way back to fiscal year 01, back at 9-11 days when the budget was around $330 billion. Obviously, you can see the growth. I'm not going to go through all of this again. The base budget is in blue. The OCO is in orange. Uh, but basically, we, we tapped off at the fiscal year 10, and now we're not, and after coming back down uh, to the low point of fiscal year 15, we're growing again. This is in current dollars. This is not in constant dollars. It's current, current dollars. But you can see that OCO kind of leveling off, but still very important and very large. Um, and et cetera. Uh, now, the government, that note up on the upper right-hand side in red, the government plans to use the, uh, the OCO, uh, $20 billion as a placeholder in the future. Now, they've tried that before, you know, saying we're going to have a $30 billion or a $35 billion, or sometimes it was only $11 billion as a placeholder. But, you know, it, the uh, OCO turns out to be $60 billion or $70 billion and things like that. So I'm not sure how, how effective that's going to be. Um, so... Let's, uh, let's do a quick comparison of uh, DOD in the U.S. with the rest of the world. Uh, in Jane's defense budgets, we do 105 countries uh, around the world. And you can see a chart here that basically shows in the blue bar, it shows the, uh, uh, the U.S. portion of the global uh, spend. And then in the green bar, it shows the next 11 countries. You can see them over there on the right-hand side. Uh, China is very big. Uh, India is growing. U.K. is very big. Uh, France, Saudi Arabia, Russian Federation, Japan, Germany, South Korea, Australia, and Brazil. When you add all of those 11 up, you get the green bar uh, for about 38.6%, which is almost uh, exactly what ours is, 38.7%. Um, and then if you add the rest of the world all the way up to 105 countries, uh, you get the, uh, the orange bar, which is about 22.7% of the global spend. So th this is the fiscal year 17 uh, results, okay, which are more or less actuals now. And uh, you can see the uh, global uh, defense uh, spend was $1.695 trillion. Um, again, you can see the comparison. Uh, U.S. is about 39% of the, uh, the global budget. However, it's about 68% of the RDT&E budgets around the world. And the and, uh, U.S. provides about 72% of resource to the NATO alliance. So basically, we wanted just to give you uh, the magnitude of the U.S. defense budget as, uh, as compared to the world. The next chart, again, the, we're going through the displays here on the, on the budget. Uh, again, on 12 February, we, we have a PBR for fiscal year 19. The left pie chart is a distribution by service. Uh, the green wedge is the Army. The, blue, the dark blue wedge is uh, the Navy and the Marine Corps. Uh, the light blue, Air Force, and the, the purple for joint. Okay, so you can see the numbers there on the bottom, and it, it, there's the 686.1 billion. And, of course, back in, uh, back in the saddle on the 4th of September, with 26 days remember uh, until the start of this new fiscal year. So will it be an appropriation budget or will it be a CR? I think I know which. Okay, to summarize, to summarize, PBR, 12 February, uh, balls with Congress, 199 day, uh, days to go until the start of the fiscal year. Security environment, uh, it's uh, dr dramatically different than, uh, than the, the, uh, the JCS has seen over the past uh, few decades. Now, a lot of documentation has followed this year with the National Security Strategy in December and the National Defense Strategy in January, and then followed by the Nuclear Posture Review. So these are three of the five reviews. You have the BMD Review and the Force Structure Review ongoing. And so those, all of those are informing uh, the next uh, PBR. Um, uh, the, uh, the defense calculus, you can see the people there, the Russian, China, near peer, the North Korean, Iran, authoritarians, and the terrorism, et cetera. They all figure in. Uh, it, it's been announced that the 19 budget is a transitional budget, partially informed by these five DOD studies, and waiting for the full up fiscal year 20 PBR in February of 2019. Full up meaning that this administration has its basically hands, uh, it's, it's mainly under their watch that it, it has been generated. So again, the security environment is, is and will be an enduring condition, uh, and DOD is taking a long view uh, to national defense. So. That, that is my summary. I think I'm right at the 75-minute point, and I'm going to turn it back over to Diane Janeway for the Q&A session. Thank you. We look forward to welcoming you to any of our future online briefings. The next briefing will be held on Wednesday, March 21st, the topic being 
Turkey, weapons production, and procurement. Thank you for joining us, and have a good rest of the day.